Hello, I'm Peter Johnson, and I'm going to take you on a tour of XSLT. I'm going to show you the magic of using XSLT to transform your XML documents into various formats. Along the way, you'll be able to type in code and experiment and see how these things work, viewing the results in your browser. First, let's take a preview of XSLT. This is basically the recipe of how we bring it all together. We're going to start with XML data, and then we're going to take the XSLT statements, which is basically a programming language, mix it in with a little HTML, some CSS, and we'll feed it into a parser. Now this parser can be either Internet Explorer, Firefox, or you can use a more professional parser such as Saxon. And the parser will combine the XSLT statements and the XML data and come out with a new output. This output can be XHTML, it could be a PDF file, a zip file, just a plain text file, or with the XS XSLT statements, you can completely reformat your XML and come up with different, a different format of an XML. This is commonly used to transform an XML document from one format to another, say, two companies that have two different formats. So let's start out by opening up the two files. We're going to look at people.xml as well as people.xsl. And the file we end up with will be people.html. You can view these in TextPad or any editor, text editor that you, you would like. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit the XXL document so it matches what we're doing in the following slides. And then we'll run it through a parser to see what our results are. So go ahead and pause this presentation and open up the two people files, people.xml and people.xsl. Now let's take a quick look at people XML and I filled a few things in as a preview so you know what's coming in and kind of how everything's going to fit in. We can start up on line one and you'll see that our regular XML declaration is there. And in a few slides we're going to put in our connection that'll connect with our XSL document. And you can see that the type is text slash XSL. We're putting the version in. We're using 2.0, which works good with the Saxon processor. And here's where we connect with the actual physical file. So we'll be connecting with people.xsl. I have people PKJ here because this is my second version that I wanted to show you so you could see the results. I didn't want to ruin my original copies. Now here's what the XML looks like. The root is people and it's made up of several person elements. So here you can see a person element for Mark Wilson. Here's one for Tracy Wilson and of course Jody Foster and on and on. Now what our objective is going to be is to show each of these persons on a separate line of a table on a web page. So we're going to show Mark Wilson's data across a row Tracy's data across a row, Jody's data across a row. And we'll use XSLT to do that. Take a quick look at our XSL file. And at the very top, you'll see the XML declaration. So that tells you right away that XSLT is an XML document. This is very useful in helping you validate, especially finding those missing stop tags. So if something doesn't go right, try validating your, your document, your XSL document, and the error messages might point you to something that you're missing. Now I've added several comments in the file, and each of these numbered comments matches the slide that we'll be looking at. For example, on slide one, we have the style sheet, and this is where we, we set up the namespace for the for this document. Again, notice we're using version 2.0 
This is useful with the current version of Saxon. Please read the comments as you go through this exercise because I have lots of important information in each comment. And on, on this line four here, we'll be adding this in a future slide. This is just to give you a preview of what's coming up. Here on step two, you can see where I've already added in the code. So I've put in a template match, which matches our root. And then down at the bottom of the document, you can see where I have my stop template. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, here's my stop style sheet that matches the namespace style sheet up on line four. So you probably have a pretty good feel of what we'll be doing. So let's get to work. First, let's connect your XML document to your XSLT. So open your XML document up, people.xml, and type in this line. This is all one line. You notice I put the attributes on separate lines just for readability and maintenance. And we're telling the, the parser when it comes in that we're going to, this is going to be an XSL connection. We're setting the version and the file name, people.xsl. Now, if you're going to use parse, uh, Saxon to parse your files, you won't need this line. This is what's used by the browsers if you directly look at your, this XML file in a browser. Next, let's open up our XSL document, people.xxl, and we're going to add the namespace. Here you can see the style sheet. Here's the namespace. This is all one line. I had to do it in multiple lines for the PowerPoint. And again, we set up version 2.0 to match the version that, that Saxon is looking for. Now the namespace is used to identify the XSL processing statements. And if a statement doesn't have XSL colon in front of it, it's simply copied and fed through to the, to the final document. Make sure your XSLT file is valid and don't forget that stop style sheet. So let's go back and take a look at our XSL code and here you can see where we're adding in the namespace and as we go down through the document, here's where, and you're going to do this in a few slides, but here's where we're using the namespace to call out the template. And then we go into a series of HTML commands. So we set up a table with a row with several headers. So this is our column headers. And then again, we come to an XSL statement. So you see how the namespace is used to separate the XSL from the HTML code. This allows us to interweave the two throughout the document. And just as a reminder, here's your XSL style sheet. Go down to the bottom of the document and put in the stop style sheet. Now, the first thing we want to do is tell the parser that we want all the elements from our XML data. So go into the XSL file and look for the comment for number two. So we're looking for number two XSL template. And you want to put in the statement XSL colon, which is our namespace, template. And then we're going to do a match slash. And you can see where our XPath language is coming into play here. So XPath works very closely with XSLT. And as a reminder, go down to the bottom of the document and add in your stop XSL colon template. So here's our XSL document. And right underneath, around line 13, you can see where we've input XSL template and our match to our root. This will take all of the XML element and the data and make it available. And at the very bottom, we put our stop template. 
Now, one of the things we want to do is get each of the persons and show those on a, on a line on our table. So we're going to need, use the for dash each of the XSLT language. Now in other languages, this would be a for loop and it would involve multiple lines of code. But in XSLT, all we have to do is say use the for each and tell it what we want to select. So we're going to put in the for each and the stop for each. And here's a look at our code and down right after the first table row around line 28 you can see where we put in the for each and this is going to select the people and then the sub tag person from all the data that we've already extracted from the XML document and then down right before the end of the table we do our stop for each. Now, if we did our, our for each outside of the table, then each person would have their own table. But we, what we want is each person to have their own row. So here's our for each, and then here's the table row, and then for each person, we're going to say their name, their address, their telephone number, etc. And then loop around again. So this is just like a for loop, only it's it's written much cleaner, much much more simpler. All right, we have enough code now, so let's take a look at our our results in a browser. Now you can use either Firefox or IE, but in this case, IE has much better error reporting than even the most recent Firefox. And when I recorded this, that was Firefox 3.0. Now, Firefox might have improved since then, so you might check it out. Um, Saxon is even better. It'll give you much better error messages. So for right now, I would suggest using IE. And if you get an error, look down in the lower left-hand corner, and you'll see a, a triangle with an ex exclamation mark. If you double-click on that, then an error window will show up with, lots more, with a lot more details. So here you can see that I forgot to close my style sheet on one of my tags. It gives me my file name and all the details I need. And here's the results in the browser. You can see our table. And then we have, right now, we haven't captured the individual data, but you can see where the names, the address, the telephone numbers, all the details for each person will come in. And you can see the for each is working because we have the five rows that match each, each of our people fields. Now, if you get some errors, for instance, you might get a C data error, then look for text that's outside of an element. Um, this happened to me and I found out that I had uncommented one of my comments and that left a line of, of text hanging out without a tag around it. If you get other errors, the first thing to check for is those matching stop tags. So make sure all your start tags, especially your XSL start tags, have a matching stop tag. Now let's dive in and get the individual data. To do that, we're going to use the value of function of XSLT. And we're going to select the name. Now there's two things to notice here. We could use the complete path leading down of our X XML document to the name field. But with XSLT, we do everything with a relative reference. So we are already in the people person element. So all we have to do is say name because we're already located inside each person. Also notice here we have a stop slash. This value of is a single uh, entity so we don't it's not a double tag so we finish it off with the stop slash and the greater than. You could also put a space here after name and before the, the slash. Now we're going to put this between our TD tags because this is going to fill out a row for each person.
here's the code and you can see that inside of our for each loop and inside of our row for the first column or the TD we're going to show the value of name now there was some text here it said the name field will go here so I replaced that text with our XSLT statement and here's a screenshot of the results so you can see where Mark Wilson Tracy Wilson and Jody Foster Lauren and Steve all showed up in the name cells of the table and again our statement was value of and then we selected the name. Now you can do the same thing with with the same technique displaying all the other data. So go ahead and add the code in value of for address, the telephone numbers, the fax numbers, and the email. Each one will go in its own set of TD tags. And if you'll notice on the code I have text already in there, so replace the text with the appropriate value of statement. And then go ahead and view your work and make sure everything is working appropriately. So, let's cover what you've learned. Why is the namespace important? Well, the namespace is used to separate out different commands. So you can have an XSLT command in its own namespace, and that won't be confused with your HTML code or even your CSS code or whatever other language you, you use with XSL. What XSL command or element is used to match all the data in an XML document? That's right, that would be the slash. The slash is the same thing as saying the root of the document, and this comes directly from the XPath language. What XSL command sets up a loop? Incorrect again, that's the for each command. And how do you show the C data or the text of an element? that would be the value of statement. So now you've seen a quick overview and fiddled around a little bit with XSLT and from here you can go on and explore more details and notice how the XPath language tied in so closely with XSLT.